Uh, next up, we're going we're gonna to talk about Node.js, one of the new frameworks that's getting a lot of attention. And for that, we'd like to invite Ryan Dahl, an engineer at Joint. He's the creator of Node.js and obviously a leader in the community since he created it. Come on up, Ryan. <laughs> hey, hey, how are you? So wh what is Node.js and, and why did you create it? Um, so Node is, Node is a, uh, a framework sitting on top of V8's, uh, the, the JavaScript engine from, from Google that's in Chrome, uh, V8. Uh, it's a set of uh, libraries that allows uh, you to do server-side things with, with JavaScript. Um, and it does it in a very particular way that's, that's kind of uncommon. And, and why did you create it? What problem were you trying to solve? Um, so generally, I, I wanted to get inside the web server. So I, I wanted to expose a web framework to people that allowed them to do what was being done inside, say, Nginx, where you had completely non-blocking sort of you know, all the, all the knives and switchblades were kind of spinning around you. Somewhat difficult to, to deal with, but it turned out that JavaScript is, is really a good language for defining those. To, because of the closures and... and exactly. You, you have anonymous basic. functions, you have closures, and yeah. it, generally people are familiar with uh, client-side JavaScript where you do sit in a single thread and you, do, you can't block the website. And so it, it turns out to be kind of a nice combination. Yeah, and you were you were a Ruby guy for a long time, and you were into the Ruby community, and and decided, hey, there might be something out there that I can can contribute in terms of something that might work better. And your thoughts, I believe, were that people won't write maybe full blown apps in Node, but Node's going to be great for stitching together small API services, very very fast asynchronous type things. Correct. Correct. And yep. again, so we're seeing this 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 trend of everybody has wants choice and wants multiple things to run in the same target platform. And, and now, who's using this? Is this uh, any enterprise guys, or is it mainly next-gen, forward-looking guys, high-scale environments, real-time? You know, where's the sweet spot, and, and who's adopting it? Well, I, as you uh, noted in the beginning, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very new platform, and it's, it's mostly the small startups, the, the hackers playing around with it. Right. it there's, there's a lot of bugs still. Um, so you don't see big enterprise customers, but you know, hopefully in a couple of years we'll get there. So more like the early days of Rails. Exactly. Is, is that way. And, and we've seen what, what has happened in that framework, how it's kind of shifted to more mainstream now. So I think that, that what we're doing with Cloud Foundry and our approach to frameworks is to say, let's not try to guess you know, where the industry is going. Let's make sure that we're agile enough to bring in you know, the, the new frameworks and the new runtimes that we believe in, and let's make sure that the system is open enough so that some of you guys out in the audience and out in the web can say, hey, you forgot about my framework that I never told you about. I'm gonna hack on the code a little bit and submit a patch request, and next thing you know, the, the framework du jour will be in the system. One of the, the interesting things about what Ryan has done, and you and I talked about a little bit about this before uh, the event is, you know, again, Rails, when we talk about Rails struggling a little bit before Bundler came online, or the concept of package management, how we actually describe package management. Um, what Node's already done as an early framework is it actually has adopted a, a package management system called NPM, but it's made it kind of unobtrusive. So NPM can run on the client side and package your app up and then get out of the way. And so we're actually going to see something where we push it into the system, and unlike Rails, where we kind of have to understand Bundler might be playing a role here, um, we actually don't care whether NPM was actually around or not on the client uh, machine when we actually push into the system. So, so for Spring, you know, I've seen this Pet Clinic and travel, and app. Otro, travel app forever. They're like the canonical app for that platform. Is there a canonical app that people associate with Node? Right, and in Ruby, it's it's the typical cr uh, crud sort of uh, to do list. And in Node, it would be something very asynchronous, like a chat application. Like a chat app. All right, and you wrote a chat application to kind of showcase. That, that was that. my original demo for, for Node. Yeah. Right. So, so. Why, why don't we switch to the, the demo machine? And, and I think one of the interesting things about the system, um, and we want to talk about that, is what do you have to do to your app to get it into the cloud? And so this is Ryan's uh, original code. I downloaded directly from his GitHub repo. And what I want to talk about is, is how much do you need to change your app to actually run in the cloud? And Ryan showcases his app a lot of times. I've seen it many, many times. 
The only thing that it does is it says, I want to bind to a certain port. And in the cloud, that's a no-no. And we saw something with STS in terms of what Romney Voss and Mark did about how we can dynamically figure out where we're running. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here. And so I think you originally did it for port 8001. Um, and so this line right here, and we'll try to zoom it in a little bit. Um, it's I can see it. OK. <laughs> it's this guy right here. Um, Essentially, it says where Foo is going to listen to the port. And all we've done here is say, hey, if you're running in the cloud, we know that Cloud Foundry is going to wrap your system with environment variables that you can access that are both applicable in the Java environment, Ruby on Rails, and Node. And so that's actually going to show up as a app port right here. And so I say, hey, if there's one of those defined, use that. Otherwise, use the one that Ryan's actually defined. And that was it. That's a line of, of um, code that you would have to change if you're deploying to any server, right? He just coded it for localhost, but if you move it to Amazon or whatever, you have to say, what port am I going to listen on? So that, well, and, and it seems like a cloud, a good kind of change to cloud enable the app in general. Yeah, and I think that you know, everyone in the audience and everyone out on the webcast probably understands that how much you have to change your app and how much you have to actually kind of bend over backwards and do different things is a barrier to entry into the use of the system. So there's certain things like Mark alluded to and talked about, like the port that you bind to. We have to pick that for you. But at the same time, you saw with the STS demo, I just want to use a MySQL database. I actually like MySQL database. I actually understand it. I just want to use that. We want to make sure we adopt both. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a push on chat. I know Brian's code always works, so I'm going to say, you don't have to ask me any questions. Just go ahead and do it. And so it's now running. So we'll go to the browser. So this should look familiar. Looks very good. <laughs> yep. And we've already got people on, of nice. course. <laughs> cool. Be, be nice, please. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've seen here is, is, is a couple things, though, and in terms of what Ryan's bringing into the, the ecosystem of a new framework that new developers are starting to adopt what the friction was to get that actually on Cloud Foundry, and what the friction is as a developer to say, I want to take my Node app and actually run it into the system. I'll do one more uh, quick demo, and we'll have some more conversations with uh, Ryan. So this demo is, again, as you can tell, all of my demos are extremely simple. But if you notice this thing, it says Node Modules. That's the packaging system that uh, is called NPM. But what Ryan did, which was pretty neat, is, is that Node automatically understands that if NPM packages everything up around you through an NPM bundle call, that Node will automatically detect that. And so that Node modules directory, if we actually go and look at that, it's a lot of different things. Express, which is a uh, Sinatra-like framework for Node, they're all bundled in there. And so we'll go ahead and we'll just say push NPM. So this whole directory is basically your app. You take <laughs> that, put it on a zip file, bring it to a cloud, and you can run it anywhere, right? Now, if you noticed, uh, as we've been going through these, it says uploading 23K. Uh, 23K is representative of what the system needs from us to run. But you have to be prepared to show and send everything. And so I'm going to do a VMC list, because we've been pushing apps left and right. And so you see that, oh, sorry about that. We'll get it a little bit higher. That npm.cloudfoundry is running. And again, hopefully you understand with my lack of uh, skills for All I do is print out hello world. But it actually used a micro framework that was packaged with NPM, deployed on Node within Cloud Foundry. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. That was great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So that was good. You know, we've seen three very different frameworks, one cloud, three frameworks, a lot of service diversity going on up there, a lot of different packaging technology. But the, thing that's in, the, the one thing that's in common is they all run on, on one pass, one platform, and that, that one platform runs on multiple clouds in multiple locations. So that's, that's an incredibly powerful uh, system when you, when you look at, at what our competitors and what, what the industry as a whole is doing. I think you talk about MySQL as if it's a given that a cloud should give you a relational database. And remember, that's not always the case. There are some cloud vendors out there that say, if you come onto our cloud, you've got to learn a whole new data model. And, and we think if you come onto our cloud and you already know what you're doing, continue doing great work and continue 
using the systems that you're used to.